Hey everyone, I'm Michelle. And I'm Natalie. We're reference librarians at Cook Memorial Public Library District. And we read nonfiction books. That's right, because truth is stranger than fiction. It is. And that's why we started the Nonfiction Book Report, because we wanted to share newish, noteworthy nonfiction titles with our audience here for their reading and viewing pleasure. Before we get into our books, today's MBR is brought to you by The Bookies. If you're looking for fiction recommendations, The Bookies team has you covered. Their extensive library can be found on the library's YouTube channel. Click on The Bookies playlist. We're also brought to you by CMPLD. We offer a wide range of library programming to benefit our, our diverse community. You can see all the library's programming on our website under events or in the ins and outs newsletter. Of course, you can always call the library or stop by the reference desk. We're happy to answer your programming questions or get you registered for events. Awesome. So with all of that business out of the way, should we get into our show today? We should. So today we are highlighting the beauty of blackness. Yep, the beauty of blackness. All right, and it's February. February is Black History Month. It is the time when these stories kind of bubble up to the top. It's also the month of love. Oh yeah, that's right. I wore my Valentine's. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm giving Janet on Valentine's Day vibes, but you're first. So what book did you bring us this month? I brought Black Art. Um, so this book is by Zaria Ware, and the subtitle is I love the, the uh, cover. I know it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The Audacious Legacy of black artists and models in Western art. Ooh, black models. Yes, so this book seeks to go through European art and American art and just art of the Western world mm -hmm. and find where the black people are. Um, so they were always in Europe. Um, and this book gives several explanations. The first, I would say half of the book is kind of just highlighting black history in mm -hmm. terms of you know black people and black communities that were in Europe and always have been okay you know Europe and you know Africa are not you that know, yeah there's it's you, interesting because you say that black people have been in Europe this entire time but mm -hmm. you look at history I mean you're looking at like France and Napoleon and all of the monarchs in England and you know the German in history and all of that like everything that we know about history and there's really not a lot of black stories a lot of black people that are talked about so. exactly so this book goes through that same history and finds black people awesome it's kind um, of like a ai going through the here's one here's one <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, zaria ware takes a lot of her research um from the author of the book black two doors oh, um, okay so if you haven't read black two doors mm -hmm. that book is a really good companion to this book this book specifically tries to focus on art and artists and it focuses on where the black people are in art. Mm -hmm. So um, it starts again, what I said with history, um, there's always been people who are black living in Europe, um, especially in regions like Italy and Spain and Greece. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this, but Spanish has some overlap with Arabic mm -hmm. because around the year, um, I think it was 800, 887 or something, um, they were um, invaded mm -hmm. by the Arabs and so when people speak Spanish sometimes I don't know if you, you've seen those YouTube videos yeah exactly I was just thinking about it I can't yeah. remember the the artists or the YouTube um, youtubers name but mm -hmm. she was going through a Spanish word and showing the Arabic um, origin it's something about Allah I can't remember what word she was yeah talking about where she was coming back from but yeah yeah um so I know I saw this one video um, at one point where like one person speaking Arabic and one person speaking Spanish they say the same word at the same time and it sounds very similar. Mm -hmm. So also, uh, Mali was uh, the center of medical advancements and libraries um, way back in like the 13th century. Okay. So that's where the King Midas myth comes from, okay. is that this king of the Mali Empire, um, his name is Mansu Musu, he crashed the Egyptian economy for a decade because he pilgrimaged from West Africa to Egypt and he left so much gold there that it crashed their economy for a decade. Oh my goodness. And then his son got so mad at him for spending all the wealth outside the empire that he got overthrown by his son. And mm. then after that, like the empire sort of fell apart, um, which is a tragedy because they had libraries and medical advancements and yeah. there was just so much um, wealth and knowledge centered around Mali. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a tragedy that, you know, it's, it's sort of, yeah, yeah, got lost. 
Um, so let me get into some of the images here. So, oh, look at that. I know. I got to I gotta show this. Beautiful. How, how, when is that from? Sir this Lawrence is... Alma Tadema. Mm -hmm. Portrait of a Sailor, 1858, oil on paper. And Laid the, down on panel. The Walters Art Museum in Baltimore. So again, the first part of this, it's all black history. <laughs> um, this is the, this is a portrait um, of the true person that Queen Charlotte, Charlotte in, um, what's that like show, Bridgerton? Oh, uh, that, yeah, I yeah, this is uh, the real woman that Queen the Charlotte Queen is Charlotte in Bridgerton we'll have to do a side -by -side. was based off of. And it's rumored that she had some black ancestry. Um, so here we have a a black person. Where art thou, Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> um, in the art so she goes through the art and she finds the black models that are in the art um, mm -hmm. and it's just a fabulous book this book is just absolutely like dripping it's dripping in art and wealth and fabulousness it's just this amazing would be a great, like book coffee table book it's not quite as big as most coffee table books are but like to have this out just to like yeah smart conversation yeah definitely um this one i don't i don't Is know if Japanese? i'm able um, it looks like a arrival of the southern barbarians part, part of, of a set. set ink and gold on paper ink and gold on paper the ink cleveland color. museum of art i'm not going to show this one we'll put a picture um but like it is just stunning like it's gold it's black there's ships there's people um and this is part of a set so and it's how big is it 106 146 centimeters by 337 centimeters it's so i think i think you divide i think you multiply centimeters by like 2.5 or something to get to inches there's 2.5 centimeters in an inch um so, so it's, they're it's not pretty that, big yeah 332 337 centimeters times 2.5 inches yeah Maybe like 120 something. Yeah, that's pretty big. And it's yeah. set, so wow. Um, and in the second half of the book, we get to learn about some artists who are there's black or have States. black ancestry. And there's a few artists that were American. There were some artists that were born in slavery. There's um a they talk about the colony in uh, Louisiana mm -hmm. and how there was um. Uh, community of people who were black and who were artists and were, you know, creating art and kind of using their dress and the laws. I think they there was some law that they had to cover their heads. Okay. So they did it fabulously. Um, of course. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the artists highlighted, and then um, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any names, um, but the artists included are Robert Selden Duncanson, Edward Mitchell Bannister, and Mona Lewis, Henry Osawa Tanner, Prince Dima, Joshua Johnson, David Drake, Julian Hudson, Charles Ethan Porter, Annie E. Anderson Walker, William A. Harper. And they tell their stories, they show their art. It's their stories are eye-opening. Um, there's at least these landscapes. Who's doing these landscapes? Uh, these are by Duncanson. Robert S. Duncanson. Damn. Um, and yeah, they're just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. There's artists um, in America and in Europe who have African descendants. Um, and there, there's one especially that stood out to me. I think it's Amona Lewis. She's a self-taught sculptor turned celebrity. And she was sort of, ooh, right? She is ridiculously <laughs> talented. Um, like, it's just amazing what she created. But she was like the 18th century version of canceled. I think people were just really? jealous of her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Successful black woman. We're shocking. They're, they're jealous. <laughs> anyway, here mm. is her sculptures. So um, how was she canceled? You're going to have to read the book. <laughs> 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 Let me guess. It had to do with a man. I... I'm not telling <laughs> again th like this portrait like i could compute this for degas mm -hmm. you know that famous like spent french painter 
who did all those ballet paintings. I love his work, by the way. Um, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, and then okay. there's more. There's we more. get. Um, it's also the. I mean, she's flipping through, and I'm I'm looking at like headings and chapter titles. It's also yeah. pretty pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> the title says, "But wait, there's more." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So here is a painting of a child, Joshua Johnson. Um. So again, like this book, it's this is um. I think this is where they talk about she is the person that they talk about when um they talk about like the headdresses and saying that mm -hmm. there was like a law that they had to like cover and so they like made it fashion um so anyway like this is it's an amazing book it's worth a note it's gonna open your eyes into a new yeah. aspect of black history and just kind and of art. like an art and it's gonna just you know take you back into history and say no we were here mm -hmm. you know so yeah yeah i love it thanks for sharing all right so that's black art the audacious legacy of black artists and models in western art by zaria ware and... right my turn yes so my book this month i'm bringing you the black joy project by cleaver cruz this is a literary and visual love letter to how we thrive so Initially, when we talked about our books for this month and the book that I had wanted to bring um, was a little bit more typical of the kind of books that I read. I don't know why, but I'm drawn to books that are a little more sad. <laughs> um, the stories are a little more tragic. Um, I don't know why I read those kinds of books, but and there's plenty of books in this genre with those um, with that, you know, feeling, that sentiment. And, and I was thinking about having this conversation with you and talking about that book. And I was just like, I don't want to have a conversation about the pain, about the struggle, about the, you know, the things that black people have to face every day. And then I found the Black Joy Project, which, so Cleaver Cruz um, is basically wanting to create a black resistance, like a protest, in the form of highlighting joy. And the reason I want to do this is, um, you know, if you look at portrayals in the media, you know, out in the world, black people can typically, stereotypically be portrayed as criminals, as um, uh, ne'er-do-well, as unbeautiful, as unworthy, as lesser than, unintelligent. You know, those are all the stereotypes that um, white people have plastered onto blackness and um cleaver cruz he, he it was it started off as like one instagram post he was just highlighting like one thing that brought him joy and then he realized that by highlighting and by putting out joy that it is a form of protest or resistance against the oppression that they feel because it, it's kind of like you know the 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 improv yes and exercise mm -hmm. where, you know, when you're doing an improv exercise with someone and someone comes at you, you don't take what they say and, and negate it. You, you, you take what they say, yes, and then you add to it and. And so this is his form of like yes anding for um, the oppression and the, and the trauma and the, and the um, racism that they feel is by highlighting the joy that people are also feeling as well. There are um, several essays as well as um, different um, art that just highlight people either experiencing joy or um, or just having joy. The um, I, I uh, was thinking of read about this back when the pandemic first started because um, I don't remember what it was, but somebody was talking about like. 300 years from now, when they look back at 2020 and they're going to be like, you know, there was this COVID-19 pandemic and what they're going to read about, what they're going to know is about all of the death and the pain and the, the folly of the, you know, policies and, and, you know, could have, should have, and, you know, hindsight, the things that people get when they look at history from, with hindsight. 
And meanwhile, you and I having lived it know that, yeah, those parts were there, but also like I can look back on 2020 with a sense of nostalgia because for me, my personally, my family, we were all together in our home. Nobody needed to leave. We were all safe. We were all bubbled together. And it is now that we're back to, you know, going about our lives and hobbies and people have things here and, and going back to work at the office and things like that and back to school in the buildings. We don't spend as much time together as we did in that chunk of 2020. And I can look back on it and I don't remember, you know, the news stories in the background and I don't remember, you know, the trauma, but I can look back and remember like that time we were all sitting on the couch and watching a, a movie together or the time like, you know, we barbecued and, and I, we all, or we all went out on the patio and I cut Brian's hair for the first time, you know, it was like a family event and, and the, we laughed at those things, right? Mm -hmm the trauma of it was like not being able to go get a haircut, but we found the joy in it. And so it's the same kind of principle where you can like look at, you can look at a, a situation, a chunk of time, a people, whatever it is, and you can see what you want to see, but it doesn't mean that the other things are not there as well. So yeah, the pain is there. Yeah, there's trauma. Yes, there are trying to overcome you know, the centuries that blackness has been equated with agony and grief. Um, but at the same time, similar to how your book, you know, that black people were always there, they were also joyful as well. Another thing that comes up is like, because um, you, you talk about stereotypes and stereotypes kind of treat people as like a monolith. You know, everybody is the same as one. And the um, one of the essays in here talks about how you know black people are not a monolith. For as many iterations and um, for as many black bodies as there are on this planet, there are different black ways to be black. As many black people as there are, there are that many ways to be black. There's no one way to be black and they get to decide and define what it is for them to be black. And um, when you when you look at the, you know, the media and the portrayal um, of blackness, it can kind of have this tone of like everything is this kind of like Eeyore cloud over everything, right? And his point of his project is that is not, it's, that is not the only side of blackness. There is a joyful part of it as well. And when they can tap into that and when they can and focus on that, that that is what can take you to the point where you then move it, move beyond it, right? We can't move to our new future without acknowledging our present. And this book acknowledges the present that yes, there is pain, yes, there is trauma, and there is joy, and there is beauty, and there is happiness, and there is this just community that comes together. And so when you, when you highlight that, that then kind of shines a light on what is possible, what can be possible. And then you can focus on that and, and move forward. But when you deny, when you are um, in denial about what the culture actually is doing, when you are wanting to throw it under the, sweep it under the rug or turn a blind eye, or you know it's not happening to you, so you don't have to deal with it, or it's not your problem, whatever it is, that that, then just kind of creates the cycle where it just keeps happening over and over and over again because you haven't acknowledged that it's there. And when you, if you, by acknowledging that it's there, you can then move on to a place where it is not. But if you don't acknowledge that it's there, when you try to move on, it's just gonna come with you. And that's kind of his point is that we wanna move on to something better. We wanna move on to a place where we, you know, we are all, um, peaceful and happy and loving each other. And the way to do that is to, to, to find joy and have those be the little lights that take you to the next place and the next place. And, the next place. I, it's, I and it. it's a beautiful it sounds, book too. Just, I mean, some of these, the pictures in here. I just, the, the art I just saw, you're just flipping through. So I yeah. Page it was, but there was this painting with like the butterflies and like, a, there's, but like, I mean, it's still, there's art of like, you know, yeah. just, people um, who have painted joyful scenes. There's, there's also scenes of people just experiencing joy. And the essays are, you know, they, they go through 
um, talking about, you know, the role that story playing um, has, the role that um, highlighting different experiences plays in just creating a more rounded picture of blackness. Um, oh, this is joy can't be taken because it is not given. It comes from within the communities and it comes from within, within them. So that's another thing that he highlighted is that they don't need other people to give them joy. That, that comes from within. And so that's not something that we need other people to give us. Um, and that also um, joy creates the space for the new world. So where kind of like, a, you know, if you think of a, a battlefield, you, you have come in and, and ravaged it, right? You've, you've ravaged the land and it's kind of like arid and everything is cleared or not cleared out. That's now space. And in that space, you, you grow the flowers, you grow the joy because so you've torn it down, now build it up with joyfulness. And he also equates the um, focusing on joy as like securing your own oxygen mask before you help other people that it's kind of the same thing where you are um, focusing on your well-being and your wellness. Because if you are only focusing on the negative, that can really take a toll on your psyche. And, I, and, I love and, that, yeah. Awesome. So this is uh, Cleaver Cruise, The Black Joy Project, a literary and visual love letter to how we thrive. There's also a URL. I can't oh, put it on. I should have written it down, and I did. I meant to, and I didn't. Um, I think it's just blackjoy.com, but I'll figure it out, and I'll put it in there, what, what the URL is, and you can go and you can look at. And there's also places where you can submit. So if you have something you want to submit as well, you can. he's still running the Black Joy Project. Okay, so that was... February stories of the beauty of blackness. I, I've so seriously enjoyed doing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, what should viewers do if they want to join the discussion? Maybe they've read a story about black um, people in art, or they have a black joy that they want to share with us, or maybe there's a different book along these lines that they want to share with suggest for us. What should they do? We would love for you to be a part of the community. Drop a comment below this video and be sure to like and subscribe to the Cook Memorial Public Library District channel so that you never miss one of our uploads. Yeah, and don't forget to set up notifications because you don't want to miss next month. It's March and we're talking about memoirs. Yep, memoirs, memoirs. in March. Yeah. All right, so then until next time, see, see you at the, the reference, reference desk. desk.